Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be doing another J Plays video, this time with Gardevoir from 2008. Now, Gardevoir is one of, I'm even going to say it's probably the strongest deck in the format, or it has the most options um, of any deck in the format, which also makes it very difficult at times to play. Now, being up front with you, um, I will say, looking over these last five games, I think I played them very well. Um, but definitely there were some points in time where we made some pretty questionable plays on stuff. But at the same time, too, I think that's also going to bring up some really, really good discussion points. Now, before we jump into the actual games, I am going to just cover the list real quick. This is similar to the previous Gardevoir deck that I featured on the channel. But ultimately, it's generally accepted that Jason Klusinski's Gardevoir list from 2008 is probably the best version of Gardevoir within a couple of cards here and there, and that's essentially what this is going to be. Now, essentially we play four Rolts, two Curlia, three Gardevoir, and then one Gardevoir level X. Um, strength of the deck is always going to be around that Gardevoir's Telepass, which lets you play a supporter from your opponent's discard pile each turn in addition to your own supporter. Psychic Lock's going to do 60, shutting off powers, so essentially you have Claydol to draw a bunch of cards, you've got your own supporter to play, and then you're using um, one of your opponent's supporter as well, while shutting off their options, making sure that they can't clay all, they can't use telepaths, they can't do any um, cool tricks on their own. We combo this with Team Galactic's Wager, um, which we try to put our opponent at a very low hand size. So essentially, best case scenario, we put them at three cards, then we start psychic blocking them, meaning that they can't clay all back out of it, and then they're in a really tough board state against probably the strongest deck in the format without being able to use powers, it's pretty hard to win from there. Now, on top of that, um, the deck has Glade, which is going to use Psychic Cut to flip as many prizes as you want to do 60 damage, plus 20 more for each prizes um, you want, or 60 damage plus 20 more damage for each prize you flip. So it's a guaranteed one-hit knockout at least. It does, you can do a maximum of 180 damage with it, which is enough to knock out anything in the format. Now, generally in a lot of cases, you're going to get one or maybe two knockouts from Glade, and then you can transition into more of a Gardevoir Psychic Lock strategy. And then you have Bring Down, um, which knocks out the Pokemon with the lowest HP in play to get the last prize. So essentially, you've got all these cool tricks. You're playing two supporters a turn. You got Clay all to draw a bunch of cards. You got Glade to take the first two, one or two prizes pretty easily. And then you got Gardevoir to take the last prize pretty easily. So essentially all you got to do is try to take three or maybe four fair prizes and you probably win the game. Um, really quick going through this here, we just went with four of the rolls um, with Smack. Now I am going to say that I think, I don't remember if Jason played the 3-1 split. I'm going to say it was very popular at the time to play one copy of the, the Dragon Frontiers rolls, which has the hypnosis can be useful in a pinch. Um, and then Psychic Boom does 10 damage for each energy attached to the defending Pokemon. So essentially, if they had, like, let's say a Gardevoir with three energy on it, you'd come up, you could do, it would do 30 for the three energy plus the, plus 30 for um, the Psychic Weakness. So you'd be hitting a Gardevoir for 60. Essentially, this could knock out a Gardevoir as well. Um, it was a little iffy. You have 10 less HP is a little bit more susceptible to something like a Bronzong um, or a Drachi EX. There's pros and cons to doing it, but I'll say a lot of Gard or a lot of Gardevoir decks at the time ran three, three, one split. And they'd also at times, you'd also see some Gardevoir decks play maybe like two copies of plus power um, to help make math a little bit better here or there. So that also kind of played into the whole psychic boom thing as well. Especially if you had Lake Boundary in play, you could hit for maybe 80 damage. You could sneak a knockout in that way. Curlia. A um, couple of different ways to play this. Um, the Psychic Research and Telekinesis, pretty rarely are those curly attacks going to be good. The big thing is it's only a plus 20 weakness, so if they did come up and they had a Gardevoir with a double rainbow, they're still 10 shy of knocking you out. It's a pretty big deal and probably a better um, better than some of the other Curlias in the format. Gardevoir we covered pretty much in depth. Uh, nothing too crazy there. Gardevoir level X, that teleportation can be useful. Um, you want to... Be conservative with your Gardevoir level X. You do get that plus 20 HP. You do have that teleportation. But you kind of need to know if you're going to need it in the matchup or not. Um, some games you're going to want to throw it down as quickly as possible just to have a little bit more utility. Other games you're going to need to hold it 
Um, so you can level up, get out maybe special conditions, utilize that extra 20 health when needed, or make sure you have that bring down attack. The worst thing would be is if your Gardevoir level X got knocked out early, and then you don't have access to it later on in the game for that bring down. Now, one of the biggest things is with a lot of Gardevoir decks is you basically had to choose if you wanted Dusnor or Muck. Now, at the time, Dusnor was the most commonly played. Muck was pretty rare. Gino Lombardi ended up third playing Muck, and a lot of players realized just how incredibly strong it was. And essentially what Muck does, if your opponent has any active po any grass energy attached to their active Pokemon, they're poisoned. Now, this includes things like rainbow energy, multi-energy, double rainbow energy. So essentially, if your opponent has a Gardevoir with, let's say, a double rainbow or a scramble, they come up and go Psychic Lock, they're poisoned, that'll do 10. You come up and you can hit them for, let's say, um, now there's two different ways to do it. If you have a double rainbow and a lake boundary, you'll hit 100, which will knock them out due to poison. If you have a scramble, you're going to hit for 60, plus 30 is 90, plus the 10 from, they took from poison at the end of their, their turn, 10 they take from poison at the end of your turn, and it knocks them out. So there's a lot of different options here, but essentially Muck gets you free prizes. Now, Jason opted to play the Dustnor and then the Jolteon Star. I personally am not a huge fan of the Jolteon for a couple of different reasons. One, it's an absolutely horrible opener. Um, let me find it real quick. So it's an absolutely horrible... If I can put it in the right spot. It's an absolutely horrible opener at 70 health. Uh, against decks like Empoleon, it's just basically going to be a free prize. They're going to just build up wrong zone damage on it. Um, it's going to be that free prize. Yellow Ray is good, but it's a power. Which means if, you got, if you're in a Psychic Lock war with your opponent, it's not going to be active. And since Muck is a body, Muck will be active. So this is just something I don't like. It's just a bad bench setter. Um, it's something I, I just don't want sitting on my bench. Now, so what I opted to do is I opted to play Dusnor and Muck, and then just opted to go to a 1-1 one -one clay doll. I feel in today's 2008 meta, this is a little bit more realistic, um, because players today are playing much higher counts of Steven's Advice, Copycat, um, TV Reporter, just straight draw cards. So you can, even if your clay doll is knocked out, you can still rely on telepaths to telepass those draw cards and then still add cards to your hands. When in 2008, it was just far more search cards, things like Celio's Network, Roseanne's Research, which was all really good, but it wasn't draw cards. Now, um, the advantage of this is in a lot of games, I could show Muck early. My opponent thinks I'm just playing Muck. They fill your bench, and then I can get a surprise Dust Storm. Um, in reality, after playing the five games, and I've tested this quite a lot, um, I don't think I'm as big of a fan of the Dustnor in the deck. I think I'll probably just switch back to a 2-2 Clay Doll line. Now, the reason I really like Dustnor is not only is Dark Palm very strong, and a lot of players just kind of played into it, but the stronger, once players know you play the Dustnor, and the stronger the players are, they'll play into Dustnor a lot less. Now, even pl not playing into Dustnor, you kind of get a passive effect um, where they just have to kind of keep their bench at a smaller size, and it creates a lot of problems for them. Um, the main reason I wanted to play Dustnor was for the Blissey matchup. It's an incredibly strong attacker in Blissey. And honestly, I think Jason got very lucky in the finals against Blissey. I think the fact that his opponent only played three Crystal Beach was probably the reason that he won. If his opponent played four copies of Crystal Beach, I don't know if Jason would have won in the finals. Because not um, making sure your opponent can't stick a beach is a huge part of the matchup. Now, one of the things that I did do is I switched the Jolteon Star to a Windstorm because I was very worried about some of the Cess decks, uh, Station Crystal, Crystal Beach decks in the format. And I will say the third Windstorm did more to help the Blissey matchup than the Dustnor did. So I think you could pretty safely drop the Dustnor, play the higher Claydol line, and then just rely on Glade, um, Psychic Cut, and then Sonic Blade in that matchup to really seal the Blissey matchup more. It's not perfect but I think that's probably the better way to play it. Um, one Jirachi. I see a lot of people miss Jirachi. Um, they don't fully understand it, but essentially Jirachi is for the Gardevoir Mirror Match, where if your opponent gets a very quick Psychic Lock on you, you can send up Jirachi, you Shield Beam, hit Gardevoir for 60, they hit you for 50, um, you hit them for 60, knocking out that first Gardevoir. They come up, let's say, with a Gardevoir Blade, whatever, knock you out, 
Um, you're sitting at five prizes, they're sitting at four, your scrambles are active. And then you can come up and response KO them. Um, the fact that Drachi will, for a single Psychic Energy, or in this case, a single Roseanne's Research, you can answer a Gardevoir, um, is a very good resource trade-off for you. And then at the exact same time, um, the fact that even when this gets knocked out, you stay ahead, um, you're in an advantageous prize position where your Scrambles are still active, um, works really well for the deck. Um, four BBs, four Roseans, two Stevens, two Wager, one Celios. Now, Jason went four Celios and I think two BBs. I went four BBs, um, one Celios. There's pros and cons to both. Um, BBs can grab the Jirachi. And on top of that, if you've got cards that you don't want in your hand, you can BBs them back to the deck and get a little bit, you can get another card off of Cosmic Power. So it's like a plus one on your Cosmic Power draw. The downside is, is... I would say very rarely, but occasionally it does come up where you don't want to put a card back. And then the other thing is, is if you're in a very contested psychic lock battle with your opponent and you don't have powers, the last thing you want is to put dead cards back into your deck. So I think there's pros and cons to both. Um, four Rosans, two Stevens, two Wager. I did test three Stevens, one Wager. Once again, that was very good against opposing psychic locks and cessation decks. But at the end of the day, I found that you really do need that second wager um, in the deck. There's some matchups where you just basically have to try to control your opponent's hand size. Um, one Celios. Like I said, Jason played four and two. And I think what everyone basically realized after Worlds is Jason's list was near perfect, but he needed a Night Maintenance in it. And that six search card was just a little bit easier to cut in favor of a Night Maintenance. So that's what a lot of players are pretty commonly doing. Four Rare Candy. Three Windstorm, um, two Warp Point. Now, the big thing with Warp Point is Warp Point can have uses with Dust Storm, but a big thing of Warp Point is you can use it reactively or you can use it aggressively. You can use it reactively to kind of save energy and things like that. Um, you can use it aggressively to go after cheap prizes or to hits. If your opponent sends up a Chat Todd or something to try to buy themselves a turn, you can Warp Point into uh force them to send up something maybe they don't want to send up and then you also have that free trade in chat tot so like let's say we had a glade active um very common is your opponent will send up like a chat tot try to get you to flip um like let's say two prizes to knock out that chat tot if you have a double rainbow on glade but you can warp point up chat tot they'll have to send something else up then you can free retreat the chat tot back to glade and then psychic cut whatever they brought up um the other thing is cessation crystal is just an absolute bear for the deck to deal with at times Warp Point is another out to that, where if your opponent plays two Cessation Crystals down, um, they're a little bit more susceptible to Windstorm. If they only have one down, then you can Warp Point or use the Cyclone Energy to get out of it. Now, the big thing about playing that third Windstorm is you basically need, if you play two Windstorm, two Lake Boundary, you essentially have to save every single one of those to answer a Crystal Beach. With that extra copy of Windstorm, you can essentially use one Windstorm just to deal with two Cessation Crystals, That'll open your draw back up, and at that point, you're going to be able to hit your additional copies of Windstorm or Lake Boundary and get those resources you need. Um, I can't stress enough how impactful that third copy of Windstorm is against big Cessation Crystal decks. Night Maintenance. Um, Lake Boundary is good. You need it for Bronzong. You need it for Gardevoir Mirror Matches, and then once again, just to bounce those beaches. We play, opponent can only play four beach. We play a total of five outs to, um, to get it back. Four Call. Call's just too good not to play in the deck so easy to incorporate search your deck instead of attack you can search your deck for two base pokemon from on your bench and your turn four double rainbow three scrambles um one cyclone three psychic energy in the deck the three psychic is very low i think you can incorporate drop the cyclone for a fourth psychic um just to make it a little bit easier but that cyclone energy once again really 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 helps with cessation crystal and the other thing i want to note here and i think this is something a lot of I'm going to say old school players and new school players miss is they just don't value the the per turn energy attachments as highly as they probably should. And we play 4, 8, 11, 12, 15 energy. And when you're in a format that's very heavy on denying you powers, whether that be by Psychic Lock or Cessation Crystal, um, just attaching an energy every single turn is so important, especially when a lot of those power denial decks will play like 4 ER2s just being able to attach that energy every single turn, constantly get those energy drops, is just too impactful not to play. 
But that's going to go ahead, um, wrap up the deck profile here. We're just going to go ahead and jump right on into the games. All right, so we mulligan once. Um, we opened Jirachi. Jirachi call with Candy Gardevoir in hand is really solid. Obviously, we would rather open the rolls, but the Jirachi call is still an incredibly, incredibly strong opening. On top of that, we can go Jirachi call. And then if we're able, if our opponent plays the Roseanne's or we're able to draw into a Psychic Energy, we're going to be able to just Shield Beam and go from there. Opponent opens... Um, Jirachi call themselves. Now, I do want to preface this game a little bit and say that um, Dan had a really, really cool deck here, really, really cool strategy. And this is not the first time I played against this. I won't spoil anything, but I'll say this wasn't the first time I played against this. And when I did play against it, um, playing against it this time, I knew what he was running, and I and I was and I'm I was able to. Um, I knew the strategy that I needed to go with to do it. But essentially what he's running is he's running a quad Jirachi EX deck with a few cards like Chat Tot and then a lot of disruption cards. So think, maybe the best way to explain it is think Blissey, but with Jirachi instead. And this deck is probably not going to do great against Empoleon. It's not going to do great against Blissey, but it's supposed to do really well against Gardevoir. So I know that I need to set up Glade. Glade is my win condition here. So I went ahead and played um, the Candy Gardevoir, and then we're setting up the Curlia to go into Glade. Now, I know he runs ER2, so that's a major concern for me as well. So I know he runs Crystal Beach, runs ER2, so that, um, that double rainbow energy is not necessarily secure. Now, I will say... Um, I will say winning that wager was huge. The other power card in the deck is actually, believe it or not, going to be Chat Tot for us. Because in this matchup, um, if our opponent, our opponent basically either has to use Super Cybel with like a plus power to knock out Chat Tot and gives a give us access to powers for a turn, or um they um otherwise otherwise they just have to two shot at Chat Tot, and that gives us two turns to set up. Now, this is not ideal at all. We end up hitting the Glade Windstorm, so this is huge for us. So even if our opponent gets an ER2, um, we know we're probably going to be okay. We also know that our opponent does play um, three or four wagers. So I'm always a little bit nervous about that. The big thing here, though, is um, the hard thing for our opponent to overcome is that I only need to flip two prizes with Glade. Now, on top of that... Um, I get two prizes for Jirachi, so essentially, I flip, um, I just have to, basically, I can use Psychic Cut three times to knock out three Jirachis and win the game. What our opponent's going to try to do is they're going to try to weave a Chat Tot into that prize trade, so we, we're forced to um, flip two prizes to knock out a Chat Tot, and essentially, that last Jirachi is going to be a big struggle for us to take down. Um, and the main idea is, is that we never get to use a power the entire game at all. And they just trade really well with us. Now, I think the... So, he gets, yeah, we see there he gets an ER2 heads. Very fortunate for us with our hand here. Um, that we have another double rainbow. Or this could have been very bad. But, yeah, Glade is just such a big struggle for him to overcome. He basically has to, has to, has to... Um, he basically has to have a way to deal with the Glade. And if he can't deal with the Glade, then we win that game. We want to drop the plus power, just fearing a wager there. He knows you'd have to drop it anyways. Um, playing the three one storm two stadium comes in major for us mm -hmm. here. Now we're not looking to do anything super exciting here. Honestly, we're just thinning the deck a little bit. And you can tell in this matchup, not only did we prize the clay doll, um, but we weren't really even that interested in just going for it because we know we'd never be able to uh, we'd never be able to get a cosmic power off. So it just wasn't worth the bench space here. Even muck could situationally be good in this. So we win this wager too. This was another large wager for us. We have the windstorm. We have the BB search for a glade. 
Okay, so this is where he's trying to weave that Glade in for the last price. We play the Muck Down, that's honestly just to get it out of the deck. We're really not too concerned about it. At this point, I know I do need to be a little bit careful. This is also a point where I know I actually get to play a supporter. So I need to try to find that warp point. Yeah, play the Lake Boundary down. Grab the Glade. Um, and then at this point, I'm actually not even going to plan on Psychic Cutting. I'm just going to Sonic Glade. I want to force him to send up a Jirachi. We're going to Telepass. We're going to go for the Wager. That was pretty debatable. But I think we just wanted the cards. We do still have that Chat Tot there. Um, and we lose the wager. We do hit the warp point, though, and that's going to be enough for game. So I do want to say real quick, um, we won this game. We won this game pretty easily. Um, I think this was the second time I played against it. The first time I played against it, I did lose to this deck, not really understanding what the deck was or the best strategy to take against it. Once I really understood the deck, his card, his card choices, the matchup became a lot easier. I think I'm three and one or four and one against the deck at this point. Just once I realized you basically just have to throw two glades at it. But it did take me a little bit to get to that point. So very cool deck. But once again, it's one of those things where a rogue deck players really aren't sure how to play against it. I think it'll do it does a lot better than once people know the deck and the strategy. I do like the idea, but I think I think there's some opportunities there to branch out beyond Jirachi. I think playing things like Muck in this deck could be very good. Um, maybe look at doing Leftovers is all right, but I think even maybe, I don't know if there'd be a better healing option. I don't know if Super Scoop Up would be better. I think you've got a couple of different options there. Um, I think just the deck doesn't have a great answer for Glade, and I, I unfortunately, I really don't think there is a super, super, super great answer for Glade either. Um, and the other downside is just that 30 damage a turn with Shield Beam is just not very strong. Yeah, I, guess, I think it's a cool idea. I think it's a cool strategy. I think you can do some cool stuff against Gardevoir. But I just wish there was more... I wish the deck had a little bit more pressure than what it has. Alright, second game here. Um, we're opening Jirachi. Okay, so opponent is playing Gardevoir Glade 2. Um, they do Mulligan twice. So... Advantageous for us, our opening hand was not super strong. Hitting that call energy was great. Great, great, great. That's gonna get we're gonna go for the both way rolls. This is something that I did bad that I need to get better about. Is I'm pretty sure I just snap called that. I don't even know if I know if the clay doll's in the deck. I just snap called the both way rolls. And and even if the clay doll's prize, it's still probably the right call. But I shouldn't have snap called it as quickly as I did. Um, ideal top is a Psychic Energy or Rosance. Seven outs, 42 card deck. Um, one and six. We might get it off of a Stevens or something like that too. Um, I think bet far more realistic situation is we just go curly a double rainbow. But we'll have to see how things play out. Yeah, I just don't see myself risking this hand with a wager. Still am not low enough. Yeah, we're just going to have to settle. The benching the Dusk Call was unfortunate, but it was fine. We're just going to call a rolled Grimer. We know how big of a deal um, Grimer is in this matchup. But this is where I do... You're going to see this in several of these games. But I think this is one of the biggest mistakes that I made. Um and playing a lot here is I feel like I bench this Dusk All way too often. And I know we had to bench there for the Stevens, but in a lot of these situations, we really do want triple rolls. Triple rolls, uh, Clade All Muck is ideal here, because typically you want two Gardevoirs and a Glade. All right, so we do go ahead. That was really lucky. So um, we could have warp pointed... Psychic Locked, which I think would have been okay. That would have been a little bit weaker than 
Um, it would have been a little weak if our opponent... So they wouldn't have been able to Jolteon, and they probably couldn't have gotten in the knockout with Gardevoir, but they would have got the first hit off with their Gardevoir, which isn't exactly what we wanted. Um, we did want to try to hit that Psychic Energy. Winning the Wager there was huge. I think you could debate that play quite a lot. We might have just been better off. Trying to telepass to see this network, play the clay doll. We get the cosmic power here too. Yep. Once again, I think you could argue we're a candy glade there, but sometimes it is nice just to have that guard of war. Uh second guard of war. Ideally, you want a psychic lock in this matchup as much as possible. Even if you do need to feed one or two guard of wars to a glade, you ideally do want to just psychic lock as much as possible. So opponent goes to dust call. Um, they're never going to get a dust storm off. We're never going to let them have that. Okay. Yep, we realize that. We realize we can't break the psychic power lock. Let me go ahead. I think we're looking for muck. Yeah, we're just going to want to get muck here. Just get it in play. This is going to be so huge. Um, and then the point of this, this seems, this is questionable, but we feel like we're probably not going to get a psychic a cosmic power off next turn. And we honestly just want to thin the deck as much as possible. Taking those two psychic energies to hand is going to very, give us a very small chance or a very small increase in our, um, in our consistency. One hand BB steer. And this is also a situation like we talked about when we were covering the deck where, um, BB's is really nice, but in that situation, we don't want to, um, we don't want to, we don't want to put cards back into the deck because we, we don't want to draw them later. Go ahead and go wager here. I'm going to say I snap call a lot of these wagers. I probably shouldn't. I should probably think about it more. I don't know. Generally, the the community seems pretty open on um, using, like... Um, generally, the community seems pretty open on using, like, randomizers to determine rock, paper, scissors. You're technically not supposed to, but it's one of those things where it's like you really can't prevent it, so most people are just cool with it. Um, and that's probably what I should be doing, or at least putting more thought into those rock, paper, scissors. We win that wager right there. Um, I would say we guarantee win the game from that point. Yeah, I don't even think there's a game there. I think the fact that he wins the wager and then he takes two prizes where he sees eight cards to put us at three was his best shot at coming back in this game. Um, the advantage is, is that we are going to knock out... Um, the advantage is, is we are going to knock out a Gardevoir with two Psychics and a Call. So from pretty much here on out, he is going to have to rely on that Muck. Which, or he's going to have to rely on double rainbow or scramble energies, which is fine. No problems with that. Um, but that's going to be very advantageous to us. Yeah, seven cards. If we won that wager, I don't even, I think he probably would have scooped by this point. And that's one of the things I don't like about Wager. It is just so impactful. Like, and it's such a... I know Rock, Paper, Scissors technically isn't random, but it just feels so random. And I, I just wish... I just wish that it didn't feel as random. I would take a much more even card, like a Judge or something like that. Um, I think you can debate that Gardevoir level X play. Probably fine. You want to get it out of the deck. Um, it saves it from a psychic clock with Lake Boundary, but definitely a questionable play there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set up the third Gardevoir. We're pretty much locked ourselves in with this, especially with him showing Duskull on the bench. At the exact same time, too, um, with that muck, we're going to be able to trade pretty evenly against everything, especially even Glades are going to be a pretty even trade at this point, um, thanks to muck. I'm going to go ahead and play that warp point. Try to steal another free prize off the bench. I'm going to get our cosmic power off. 
Um, he's at a small hand size. We're going to try to lock him into using a uh, Mimic on the next turn. If he does go with the Guard War Glade route, we're going to be able to answer that. We do with that Lake Boundary in hand. Could be slightly problematic if he's able to, like, wager and then get, like, a Guard of War or get a Glade off of that. And we don't have... Um, we don't have the Lake Boundary anymore, but I think even... Um, He'd, even with the Glade, he'd only be able to knock out one Gardevoir. The second one, I don't think he could one-shot, and we'd still be psychic blocking him. Solid Steven's advice from him, but at this point, he's got four prizes. He's going to have to fight through three Gardevoir. Probably a Dust, nor would be the, the fourth prize we'd want him to take. Um, So we're feeling pretty good at this point. Really would love to have a Warp Point or a Cyclone Energy. I have to check the discard pile here. Yeah, so we do have a Cyclone. We don't have another Warp. So we're going to just get the Psychic Energy. A um, couple of different options here. We can either retreat and Psychic Lock or um, for the Knockout or just Psychic Lock the Active, put him at 50, settle for a two-shot on it, or if he does retreat to the Gardevoir, we trade with the Gardevoir and then we have the Bring Down for the Knockout. So either way is, I think, um, acceptable. I do make the Retreat play. I don't hate this, but I don't hate this, but I do think just going Psychic Lock and protecting that third Gardevoir was probably the stronger play there. Yeah, he's going to send up the Gardevoir level X. Um, no real issue here. Uh, that muck is just going to help us trade so favorably. All right. Next up, we see an Eevee. Um, could be a Leafeon deck, could be a Glaceon deck. I'm going to do a little bit of foreshadowing here and say that we do end up losing this game. Um, I don't think we should have lost this game. So let's take a little, little bit of a look at this and see, see where things might have gone a little wrong for us. So opponent goes first with our hand. That's absolutely what we want. Has the clay doll. We're not going to be able to stop the turn two cosmic power. Has the call energy. Very, very, very strong start for our opponent. Now, now this is when... I think this is probably one of the bigger decisions in the game right here. We have two options. We can either go for the Gardevoir, attach the Double Rainbow, have a turn to Psychic Lock, and um, be able to telepass their, their Celios. Um, and that's the play that we go with. But I think there's a real, real, real argument here to throw the Jirachi at them and go with a slightly slower approach, but have the Roseanne's for like Psychic Ball Toy settle for the turn two guard of war and then just try to set up behind that yeah so this is the route we go our opponent probably doesn't play wager so we shouldn't be too worried about that um we I see baltoy played on there grimer and muck is going to be the other one we, we really need yeah so we go this route i don't think this route is bad the problem is is it does walk us into a bronzong play a little bit yeah, so he does have the bronze on. So we do see benches four. So we're we're thinking dust nor at this point. This is all fine. Yeah, the mag mortar is what makes it hard. I really I think I snap called the Gardevoir option a little too early. I think there's a lot of pros and cons to both. I think we're just fearing a Leafeon, trying to devote two energies to a turn to Leafeon, um, where he two shots us, and then we still have to find the scramble. Yeah. Yeah. So we're sitting fantastic at this point. So we're going to try to set up a little bit more consistently. We really want to get that muck into play as quickly as possible. We're going to save the Stevens advice. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and psych the clock here. Okay. 
Actually, the double rainbow also fine. Plays a copycat to six, so it puts him back at a decent hand size. All right, this is also where we get really questionable. We'll go ahead and let this. We'll let this play out a little bit, then we'll talk about it. So we're gonna go ahead, grab the Curlia, attach the scramble. Yep. So this is probably the safest play. Um, we're gonna start setting up. We're gonna start setting up the muck. So this is fine. And then what we do here, and I think this is, I don't know, this is questionable. But essentially, we end up passing because we don't have a backup attacker ready. And if he has the scramble energy, and he, he just one shots us with the Bronzong. Because he sends up Bronzong, Gardevoir takes 10, scrambles, 60 plus 30 is 90, and then we die to the, the Cursed Alloy at the end of the turn. <sighs> The other side of that is he probably placed the re-scramble maybe four, and he's already have two in play. Maybe we should have just gambled it, taken the knockout on the EV. Um, hope he brought up the Bronzong or brought up the Leafeon, and we just transitioned from there. So I don't know. Questionable play. I think we also see some Dustnor options, and we don't want to totally um, nix that plan either. And I think if we would have done something like opened, if we would have done something like opened on, um, like call energy under the Andrachi, I think this line of play would have been a lot simpler. Okay. So he's going to go ahead. I think he's probably going to burn the force here. Or Verdant, Verdant Dance. Does the energy forcing and everything. Yeah, so this is all... Alright. I really do... I think the biggest decision so far was, was the Drachi. That was a big question. Do we go with Drachi or just go with the turn 2 Gardevoir? And I think the turn 2 Gardevoir just made more sense, but I think there was a real argument to Drachi. And I also think, um, yeah, I probably just get the muck here. And I, I think that turn of passing versus just hoping he didn't have the scramble was also was also there. And it looks like we might have prized the dust nor, which is going to affect things a little bit, which is fine. We played out in the Gardevoir. I think that was questionable as well. I don't think he's going to wager us or anything. I don't think we had to play the Gardevoir down there. Yeah. And I think he's got a scramble. No, it's a call. Okay, so he plays Warp Point. Okay. Yeah, I think benching evolving that second guard war got really questionable really quick. Yo. We do at the lake boundary. This was pretty big. At this point, we're feeling we're feeling pretty good. We take the first prize. weren't thrilled about that, but um, we're feeling pretty good. We do have the candy glade. Feeling pretty good about that. Um, at this point, I think we're still sitting really well in this game, especially when our opponent doesn't have. They'll they'll have to attack the guard of war. They can't just like bronze on it or something. Five card hand. Opponent sends up Eevee, which I 
I think they end up going for the lunch, which I think is the most like gambly play I can imagine in this situation. I think they would have been so better off just to play it safe and go fireball bazooka. Um Yeah. So uh, ugh, everything is I, I don't know. I think at this point we're still in a good spot. I'm gonna say I think this game I think I talked about it a little bit in the deck profile, but I think this game was three Stevens, one wager. And I think if we would have had the two Stevens, two wager, that also would have gotten a lot more smoothly for us in this game. Opponent gets the lunch heads. I'm gonna say this was not the play at all. I mean, maybe their hand was just horrid and they just wanted to gamble on it, but um you miss that lunge, you lose the game here. But they end up hitting it. Um, we're gonna go with just cosmic power here. We're gonna go with just psychic lock. Alright, this is all fine. See what they bring up. I think we're still in a really, really, really good spot here. Okay, so they bring up Magmore, they're poisoned. Bronzor, cast form. All right, all good. I mean, arguably, I think they could attach the cast form to the, the Magmar. Yep, which they do. Very smart play by them, protecting that scramble. Okay, they go in Fireball Bazooka. I think at this point, we transition into the Glade. I think there's a real argument just to Psychic Lock there as well. Yep, so we go for the Guard of our level X. I don't hate this. We're trying to just put a little too much pressure on him. Um, I think telepassing their Stevens probably would have been good there. Just to see what we got. We take the Dusk Gall. Opponent sees that, which is unfortunate. Um, even if they have Bronzong Scramble, we still, um, we can still knock it out. Um, the nice thing is, is I feel a little less pressure on Psychic Locking when they've already got a 10 card hand. The energy forcing is not good, but at least they're not drawing a bunch of cards with Cosmic Power. I guess the offside is, is they already have a bunch of cards, which, would, which isn't exactly good for us either. All right. Um. Yeah, the scrim we knew is 60, 90, 110. They're going to be 20 shy, which is fine. Um. We knocked them out with or without Lake Boundary, thanks to Muck. Okay, attach a fire energy. Yeah, so he attaches a fire energy. And we're going to go and telepass. We take the copycat. I don't really have a whole lot in our hands. I don't know. If we, we need to set up another Gardevoir. I forgot what we had in our original hand. Maybe we should have gotten more towards that approach. I think we're out of Curlias, though. Which is a little, little bit harder for us. Yeah. Teleportation in. This is good. We go ahead and play it down, which I don't think we need to. Yeah, that lake boundary was not great there. And I think this is where we mess up. We should have had a call energy under the um, the rolls there. That was definitely a misplay on our part. Definitely should have had a call energy under that rolls. Yeah, so they have the Bronx on. Have the scramble. That's super unfortunate for us. Um, I think there was also an argument there to hmm. Yeah, I think there was an argument that we should have just left the glade. 
That might have been like the third. I think the Drachi was one game game deciding factor. I think deciding whether or not to attack that turn was a game deciding factor. I think our opponent going EV lunge was a game deciding factor. And I think sticking with Gardevoir over Glade there was another game deciding factor. I think in hindsight, I think just sticking with Glade might have been better there, even if we gave them powers for a turn. Because if they went if they went this route, we would have knocked them out. I don't know. And we'd still have a Gardevoir in play. Yeah, I think... Yeah, we could have wagered lock that turn. That Maybe that would have been stronger. We're going to go and flip the glass two, just because we know the extra prize of Glade is not going to matter. We want to see what's in there. So yeah, we did end up prizing it early on. Okay. Let's see what our opponent's going to do here. Opponent one storms the boundary. Okay, so that didn't actually hurt us. Want to place BB search? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I don't think I realized it at the time, but I really do think if we would have gotten Glade into Gardevoir instead of Gardevoir into Glade, I think I think we might have won it from this point too. Yeah, that was just there's just so many factors here. Definitely a couple definitely some questionable plays and like a few little mistakes as well. Play the war point. We'll see what he brings up. If he doesn't like Eevee or something, we want to make sure we can do the Glade. We just go ahead and bring up the Gardevoir. We win it on the following turn if we have that long, but I don't think we will. Yeah, he wins it off of a war point. Anything else we win it. Yeah. I'm sorry, Warpoint, Magmortar Axe is what he needs. And he has the Warpoint, has Magmortar Axe. Highly unfortunate for us. Our opponent does end up winning that. I think there was a lot of... Opponent played it well. I think the Eevee, like putting the entire game on that coin flip was pretty questionable, but it ended up paying off for him. And I think we had some... I think there was a lot of debatable plays in that game. But it was a good game. It was a good game to commentate on. But yeah, definitely, I think we should have won that game. All right, so... Um, open roll, it's ball toy. So I do think, uh, we're going to be playing against Blissey. So I do think, in this format, there's very little that punishes you for double benching. Um, and every deck plays Chatot, so generally speaking, it's better to waste fill your bench just so they have a slightly worse Chatot. Alright, so we're looking into turn 3 Glade here. We know our opponent does play, um... Um, like ER2 and Crystal Beach, both of which can shut us down. So we're going to be a little cautiously optimistic here. I do like Dusknoir in this matchup, Duskal in particular, where sometimes if they can't find that fighting energy in the hole in FF early, um, Duskal usually has to get two-shotted, which can buy you a little bit of time. We're going to go ahead and just hit the Chansey for 30. We thought about hitting the Chatot, but even if we do get a Glade next turn, it's just fewer prizes we have to flip. So, um, we're going to foreshadow a little bit here, too. We end up getting the Glade, so very good start from us. Opponent does not have an ER2, does not get an ER2 heads. We find out later on in the game our opponent basically does not play Crystal Beach. They just play Cessation Crystal. And that's something that just ends up really, really, really killing them here. Um, we go ahead and end up putting the Warp Point back. We actually would rather have the Warp Point in the deck and the Steven's Advice on the bottom. Um, I believe we only have to flip one here, so 50, 80, yeah.
And this is the general strategy. As long as we can do all right, at this point, even if he hits an ER2 um, or Crystal Beach, we can still make plays. Plays on the Absalom. Yep, goes for the chance. At this point, this is what we like. We like very defensive cessation crystals. He's just trying to slow us down a little bit, and it's not even really doing a whole lot. Yep. He might play wager, so we do need to be a little conscientious of that. But at this point, we're just setting up the second glade. Or a guard aboard. Play two. Um, this was actually a misclick by me. I meant to take the lake boundary. We want the stadiums in this, but um, misclick on my part. Goes for the Absol. Doesn't even get the Baleful Wind off. So generally, I know Chuck likes to play Absol in this deck as well. Um, and the basic idea is if you Baleful Wind, you try to hit things like Windstorm or Lake Boundary, and then you transition into Blissey. So you don't have necessarily that early pressure, but by using Absol, you try to... Um, you try to kind of get rid of some of your opponent's resources and make it a lot harder for them to um, uh, make it a lot harder for your opponent to um, have you out to the beach. And if your opponent has to sit behind, you know, beach, um, play under beach, it's a lot harder for them with decks like Guard War Blade that re rely so heavily on special energies. Um, at the end of the day, ooh, that's a really questionable wager. I don't know if I like that. I'd probably hold that. I have everything I want in my hand right now. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, though, the downside is, is even if you get rid of some of their windstorms and stuff, you're just giving them so many turn attachments that sometimes they can just play under beach better than if you would have just given them pressure. All right, so we have a couple different ways of doing this. Um, my thought is to Sonic Blade back to the Blissey and then knock out the chat top, or knock out the prizes to flip for the Blissey. Um, at this point, I realize that even if he has the Blissey, I can't one-shot it, so this would be a really bad play. Um, we end up just flipping the prizes to kill the Chatot, and then if we need to, we can just Sonic Blade the Blissey. Yeah. Take the Warp Point, I'd assume. Yeah, Warp Point, we're going to value a little more highly. It's a pseudo counter, just cessation crystal. Gets ER2, heads. Very lucky for us. Um, this was something kind of cool our opponent did, and I think Blissey in general can do. Um, but generally, it's just whole and FF, fire energy, and then that one fighting. Opponents playing whole and GL and grass energy to avoid special conditions. Um... I think that's pretty cool. So at this point, I think um, we have a couple of different options here. Um, opponent saw us take six prizes, so we just basically want to make sure that we're kind of thinning our deck, setting up multiple attackers. Um, we go on Sonic Blade, which is fine. Um, putting that Blissey at 80. I do think there was an argument to um, Warp Point and just knock out the Chansey. Playing that extra Windstorm, we feel pretty safe doing this. And at this point, we have all four Cessation Crystals gone. It should be a pretty easy game for us from this point. Yeah, especially in hindsight here, I think just telepassing the... Um, or just war pointing and knocking out the Chansey would have been better. Um, we're going to go on TV Reporter, start putting cards back, or discarding cards that we don't necessarily want back in the deck off like a wager. Really would like to find a rare candy for that Dust Skull. I think Benching the Grimer is probably fine too. Nope, we decided to put that back in. Alright. Probably feel like we can see kill the best Celios. Yeah, this was a mistake on my part. Definitely should have waited on the Cosmic Power if we're going to just do that. Um, we make a very questionable mimic here. I think warp pointing knocking out the Blissey would have been solid. Yeah, I don't know about these last couple of turns from us. Pretty darn questionable all around. But I feel like, I think we feel like we're far enough ahead. Um, we have a little bit of room to play around. Yep, so the water energy is going to prevent the Sonic Blade. I 
All right, we do get the rare candy. All good there. Yeah, discard the wager. That's fine. We don't need that. Yeah, and I mean, this is debatable. I think Rolts is fine. Just going Carly Blade Psychic is fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just assume that Gardevoir is going to be more of a bench sitter. We're just going to rely more on Glade. Totally fine. Level it up is fine. We're just going to let it take a turn. We're going to let it take a hit, transition into Glade. Um, Probably just Warp Point next turn, take a free prize, and then try to finish off the, the active Blissey. Yep, opponent just goes ahead and hits us. Totally fine there. Um, I think we could have done that. I also think we could have... I think the better play would have been to teleport into the Glade and then save the Warp Point. Yeah, I think that was a, a minor misplay, but I think it would have saved us the Warp Point. Oh, we're just going to hit it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. Doesn't have the whole NFF. Put it at low health. Yeah, I take it back. I think this is a solid play. I'm alright with this. Yeah, opponent scoops. I think there was a couple different ways to play that last turn, but I think it was alright. Okay. Oh, well, solid opening from us. No energy, which is so unfortunate. Another reason we want to make sure we're playing such a high energy count. Want to place the station crystal. We're okay with that. We're okay with that. Um, not ideal, but yeah, we are okay with it. We've got the warp point. Okay, so we are playing the um looks like Empoleon. We're gonna go ahead. Not ideal from us, just no energy is really, really, really rough. So we're just gonna transition. We're gonna transition into chat tot. Go a little bit slower here. Um one of those bronze on doesn't really do anything to us. Gonna want to play the scramble just to be safe. Yeah, no real reason to do anything here. Pony doesn't really have a whole lot. Burn Plup's a little scary. Once again, Pony doesn't really have anything. Yeah, I'm going to take the knockout. Put a lot of pressure on our opponent here. Burn Plup is very, very, very scary. We don't really have a nice out to it. Copycat for four. Pony's not really going to get much. Yeah, so this is where I think our opponent misplays. Um, maybe I'll say misplays, but they don't get the ball toy. I think they're afraid to bench too much, which is understandable. But I really do think this matchup, you do need to put a ball toy down. Um, you do need to get that Clayton play because this matchup in particular, they really, really, really have to use... Gardevoir has to use Glade at some point in the game. Um, and you need to be able to use that Cosmic Power. Yeah. Yeah, I'm safe to do that. Definitely want to do that. Especially when we know they play like copycat stuff. So I'm pulling on Scramble out of four cards and getting heads on the surf together is insanely good. Um, I think there's a real argument to go for the um all right, so we do... Okay, so this was another game where we locked ourselves that Duskull probably should be a Ralts. We definitely want a Muck. Yeah. And I think there's a real argument, too. Um... 
Yeah, missing the energy drops this game has just been brutal. All right, we're just going to grab a single Psychic, Psychic Lock. Did we not attach for some reason? I don't know. That could have been a big mistake from us. Oh, that was not a good play if we forgot to attach. Turn late on the muck. Highly unfortunate there, too, but that's fine. Has the dual splash. Once again, that's fine. I think we actually... Yeah, Cosmic Power. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I think we Rare Candy. Yeah, I think we go the Dust Nor here. No, yeah, Rare Candy the Dust Nor. Put the Piplup back. Probably forced to attach the, to the Glade. I think we probably hold the rest of the hand. Yeah, if we forgot to attach that turn, that's really rough on us. Four card hand, what's the opponent going to do here? Plays a Roseanne's. Mm. Yeah, Baltoy has the water energy. Okay, Cyclone's going to be perfect. Once again, though, that's really bad for us. We forgot to attach that term. He's like, Curly should have an energy under it. And we'd still be making this play. Opponent sends up Piplup. Totally fine. Cosmic Power. This is going to be totally fine. And this, I'm going to tell you, we're, we're going to make a mistake this turn. So I guess think for yourself, see if you can see what it is. I didn't realize it at the time, obviously, because I made it. Opponent seems to be doing pretty darn good off very small hand sizes here. Yeah. So this is where we made the mistake. Granted, our opponent... Weiss has gotten incredibly lucky having Empoleon Scramble off of two cards. And then having Bronx on Celios off of two cards. And then drawing a double rainbow. Oh, and a double rainbow out of essentially like three cards. I don't think that was like the three perfect cards before a cosmic power. Um there is zero reason for us to keep this league boundary in play. We have another one in our hand. Opponent doesn't play wager, and they can't knock us out without that league boundary in play. We windstorm that. We have an easy win from here on out. Major mistake by me on this part. But I think this is just me not playing the matchup enough. Or not enough lately. Played it way too much in 2008. Okay. Yeah, this is horrible for us. Because they would have hit us for a lot of damage. We would have knocked them out. We would have had that extra turn. Another energy under the Curlia. Would have been two energy if we didn't forget to attach that one turn. Go ahead and go Mimic. Mm, rough. Rough. And our opponent's just getting that chip damage on both Dustnor and... Um, play it all at this point. We don't have the double rainbow energy. This is not the situation we want to be in. I 
And it's all off of that one little not windstorming our own lake boundary. That one little mistake is putting us in a horrendous spot right now. All right, so I'm not going to waste the next minute here. Basically, our opponent times out of the game. Um, they had some internet connections or something. Um, we do not get to finish this game. But I still think this was a really, really good game to showcase this matchup because, um, one, just you got to have that ball toy and play it all in early if you're a Napoleon player just because you're going to have those openings where you can cosmic power and you want to make sure you have that clay doll in play. Our opponent drew insanely well off no hand sizes this game, but that's also part of the matchup. Now, for us, if we miss that energy, that was major. Um, not windstorming our own lake boundary there literally could have cost us this game. This entire game is basically going to come down to, the, to our next turn. Our opponent doesn't have a good play here. They're probably going to try to set up an Empoleon. They're not going to have it. They would need some insane draws to have it, but, you know, that's how this game has been going. Um, they're going to coding the chat talk. That means the third Bronzong is basically, they basically have three free prizes here. One, two, three. These are all going to be pretty easy prizes for them. What we need to do is have Gardevoir, double rainbow energy. We're going to bench the rolls, wager. The game's going to come down if we get the double rainbow energy and if we get the wager. Um, if we win or lose the wager. We win the wager um, and we find the double rainbow energy, we probably have a pretty easy win from that point. If we miss, if we lose the wager but find the double rainbow energy, we're probably still fine. If we lose the wager and lose the double rainbow energy, miss the double rainbow energy, we're in a rough spot. But that's basically how the game is going to come down. Um, Carnivore is a really, really tough deck to play. You really have to know the matchups and know what options your opponent has and how they interact with each other. And you saw over the course of this, I certainly did not play all these games perfectly. I think it's much harder to play perfectly online than it is in person, but that's me. I know everyone kind of has different feelings on that, but I hope you enjoyed it. Had some good discussion points. Um, hopefully saw a few good plays that we made, maybe pointed out a few of the misplays we made as well. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one.